Okay, so today we will talk about meta techniques, and in I think maybe almost all of the LARPs you have been playing, uh, you have tried different kind of meta techniques. So uh, some of this stuff will be new when what I will talk about, and some will be stuff that you you actually have played already, which I think is really good because it could be otherwise quite hard to understand it. And as Aliona said. If you don't understand, if there's a term that you think, like, what, what is he really meaning? I would really love you to raise your hand and ask a question. Uh, not too long, but if, just, if you don't understand, then, I mean, I love questions and there's no bad questions. To start, uh, my definition uh, of meta techniques is communication in a LARP, in a game, between the players and not the characters. Or it could be additional story that doesn't fit into the game time and space continuum. So, for example, when you did the monologues in New Voices and Art, that was players telling players something to each other about what the character is feeling. Not the characters listening to each other talking, the players sharing information. Or it could be when playing a scene in a black box, uh, creating story, or in some other way, creating story that is not happening in the LARP right now, like not in the current time, or we're playing something in the past. We add the information that it's... We, we add some information to our characters now. Um, uh, this talk will specify a bit about something that we call dramatic game mechanics, or for short, drama mechanics. This is because meta techniques is a really big field if you look at what, whatever could be a meta technique. And the meta techniques uh, that you have been trying uh, in the games are meta techniques that are there to increase the drama, to change the drama or to add story to the drama or something like that. So we'll narrow it down to meta techniques about drama mechanics. So, there are lots of other stuff that could be a meta technique. For instance, as Jock talked about magic, like spoken magic, or magic represented in a, in a science fiction game, or in a fantasy game, or whatever. Someone saying a word, and, and that means that, like, you are now, you are now, I forbid you to talk. And if a magician says that, I understand that I cannot talk anymore. But that stuff, we will not go into that. So I just want to say that a lot of stuff can be meta techniques, but when we usually talk about meta techniques, we are actually talking about drama mechanics, stuff adding drama, monologues and such. Okay, so first, it's just really, really important uh, to think about like a, a on and off switch of the slider, of the fader, because you could of course have no meta. And you could have a lot. So, um, this, is, this is like something you just need to think about. Is it really important in my game to have a lot of meta, or, or should I have no meta at all? Because I don't think that is important. So, a lot of meta would be when our destiny is meet. Like these monologues, we play scenes, we cut up the game lots and lots of times. Or the example uh, that uh, Eric talked about, the presentation Eric held about the uh, World War II game, 1942. No monologues, no cutting with the scenes, nothing like that. Just playing the game for several days. Everything, it looked like there's no minimalism, no abstractions, nothing like that. It's just pure, the 360 degree illusion that Johanna talked about. Like, everything looks what it is. And that means like there's no inner voice suddenly popping up from anywhere. So, and of course, <laughs> you could absolutely be in the middle somewhere. And that's where it normally is when you're adding meta to a game. So, that's just, you just need to think about, like, do I want this? Do I need it? Because uh, you should not just add, yeah, we're adding a black box, because it's cool. Uh, when you do a game for education, you should really think about what is, what is really adding something to my game? What is a good feature to add? You should, if you haven't tried meta in a game, you should absolutely like 
put in a monologue in some game to test it. Put in a black box, but not when you're doing it, maybe if you're doing an educational game for school kids. Uh, then you should have like tested that with your friends. You should have tested stuff. So I, I encourage you to test a lot of meta techniques. But when you're using it like for real, then you should really think about what you're putting in or not, and not just using it because those guys in Sweden did this cool thing. Uh, but it, that's really important. The slide, the fader, sorry, the fader uh, has its focus on on the top. Uh, which is intrusive, and the bottom, which is discrete. And I will now explain what we mean with that. Uh, an intrusive method technique is something that is very obvious, <coughs> a method technique that is going on, and I cannot avoid seeing it. For instance, in New Voices and Art, <coughs> when a monologue starts, I cannot choose, if I'm standing next to it, I cannot choose to not see it. It will be very obvious for me that a monologue is starting here. <coughs> Which could be a problem if someone, if some of you realized yesterday that two people are having, uh, are having this, uh, this talk and then someone requested the monologue in the glass and starts the monologue. And then someone just goes in there, doesn't know that he is holding a monologue and like taps the glass on the person holding a monologue while he is already holding a monologue. And that's just, that's just because we don't know, like, I hope that's not too confusing, but it's, like, it's this meta, when meta stuff is right very, very in the space where we are playing, it's intrusive. Uh, it doesn't, it sound, it's like kind of a negative word, but it doesn't have to be negative. But it's just when the meta is right in your face. Or it could be a discrete technique. Yesterday I talked about Skymningsland, which was... Uh, like a big outdoor game. And what we mean with discrete techniques is when we have it at the bottom and being discrete, then it's meta techniques that is not visible for anyone who's not partaking in it. So monologues and scenes were played out in a tent, like actually in this green tent here. So if you do, didn't want to hear the monologues, if you didn't want to see the monologues or see the scenes that were going to be played out, then you just didn't walk close to that space or into it. Uh, are you understanding the difference? Yeah? I see enough heads, so I will continue. So just making that quite clear, intrusive techniques breaks the 360 illusion in public and they're really up in your face. And discrete techniques use a closed space away, a tent, another house on the perimeter, another room that is away, like in Capo, or uh, you just walk away in the forest, if you have a forest or something. Uh, a bit away from the game area where most of the things are. And they are, of course, not in your face. So if we put the fader of intrusive uh, to the max, <coughs> what, are we, what, is the, what is the pros? Uh, one pro is, of course, transparency. If I see all these monologues happening, if I have the possibility to see the monologues happening, I, I have really easy to, uh, to hear all these stories. I can hear, like, I have the, at least the possibility to hear all these inner monologues from characters, to hear their inner thoughts and stuff like that. And, and I mean, story is more easy for me to, to get. Another thing is ease of use, and by that I mean if I can hold a monologue in your voice is not right here, or I can request a monologue from you, then it's really easy for me, I mean it's just, it's one tap away, I can just do this and we can have, uh, we can use the drum mechanic. But if I need to walk away in the forest to play, the, play a black box scene, I mean it's not, it's just, uh, it takes more effort, it takes more time for me to use it. So if it's on the max, it's really easy. If you think about when our destinies meet, I can request like anything really fast if I'm a director. So the, there's, the meta is coming really, really fast. But what are the, what are the con if, the, the intrus if it's max and unintrusive? 
Uh, a thing Johanna talked a lot about is the opt-in. And by opt-in, it meant like, do I have a choice to participate or not? So no opt-in means that if intrusive, if meta is going on here and I'm playing, and I, don't, I really don't want to see this meta, I don't have a choice. I cannot choose to see it or not. So I don't have the opt-in option. And also, as I said, it's clear breaking of the 360 illusion. But it's also a clear breaking of the game. So if you want a game that is like, don't breaks up a lot of times, then you don't want it to the max. Um, maybe some of you had a really interesting scene when playing When Our Destinies Meet, like, oh, I'm doing this. And then the director steps in and like, no, I want the monologue from you. And maybe that broke your game. Maybe you had a really good flow. So it could also break the game uh, for a short while. If we put the fader on minimum, then we have the really discreet put away uh, drama cats. The option of opt-in is, of course, uh, a, a con here, a pro here, because I, if I want to play a black box scene, then I walk, to, walk away to the tent where I can play the black box scene. So it's really easy. And the total, uh, if I don't want my 360 illusion to be broken or my game to be broken, I don't have to, because that stuff is somewhere else. And if I don't want to partake in it, I don't, it doesn't break my game. The cons would be that we have less transparency. If the cool scenes or the, the interesting stuff with the, the character of my mother is played out in a, in a black box scene somewhere else, I don't get that information. So we're sharing less information, therefore less transparency. Another thing, if you put in a black box, this is a really interesting thing to talk about. Where are the players? If you put up some meta space somewhere else, people walk away there, and they think it's so fun to play the black box scenes. They may, might be gone for hours of the game. But, I mean, wasn't the game supposed to be over here and you're just away playing scenes? And you, maybe the players will be gone too much. So that's just a small thing to think about if you put in a black box scene. Like, encourage people to use the black box, but um, don't, please tell them, like, we also want you in the game area. <laughs> Monica? And maybe find a solution to where the characters went. Yeah, that, absolutely. So, like they were on the toilet. Yeah, you, if you if you're using uh, if you're using meta meta scenes like um, another space for the meta, it's good to have a. It could be good to have a logical explanation of where you're going. I will talk about that uh, in the meta technique workshop later. Um, so, uh, wrapping up. Why should we use this? At all. I mean, there are pros and cons, but like generally, why should we use uh, drum mechanics or meta? Uh, this is not something that is like all of this is not obvious stuff. It's the stuff that are this is a possible pro. So uh, we could have deeper characters and relations. If we do monologues, then I can share information about my character that I couldn't before. If I play a scene in the past, we can deepen the relationship with, between the mother and the son, which we couldn't in the game. Um, we also have the possibility to change mood and pacing with, with using different techniques. Pacing is sort of how fast the game is progressing. Like, um, I really want uh, some stuff to happen, uh, or like the drama should be increased after a few hours, then I maybe put in some meta techniques to, yeah, to speed up the game or to slow down the game. So pacing is sort of the speed of the game. And it's quite a good word uh, to remember. Um, also, you could use lots of other stuff to change mood. Uh, we will go into that uh, with the theatrical uh, techniques that I will not talk about. For, for example, using music uh, like putting in music and light to changing mood of everyone in the game could be could be going onto this as well as scenography. But as a game master, you have better game handling. Uh, you could have better game handling using these techniques. You could, uh, if you're a shadow, uh, an invisible game master going in, you you can listen in to whatever is happening 
by being invisible. You could of course do this by playing a normal character as well. But being able to put in the meta stuff could give you more, more tools to like steer the game in a direction you are you wanting. Also, don't remember, don't don't forget that some people just think it's so much fun to play the scenes, to do the monologues and stuff like that. They, so it's just the fun factor of meta is is really good. So questions, and I'm out. <laughs> yeah, wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah, is there a better game handling? Does that go for the players as well? Like when they get the extra yeah. they can use it? Absolutely. Yeah, you could you could uh, you could say that. I thought of this as a game master feature, but absolutely it's it's for the players as well. And it depends. Uh, if you I, I I absolutely agree with you because if you have a black box and you can you can a player can request I would like to play a scene with you, could you could we go up and play a scene? That make if they are they feel like my story is collapsing here a bit. I don't. I, we need to we need to play out a scene about this relationship. Otherwise, this doesn't work for me. That absolutely gives them better handling of their own game. If you give the players the possibility to choose when they want to use it. Alan. At some games where they refuse me of using monologues, I usually refer to my dreams in the morning, which is of course just a monologue I do with my players in the morning. Uh, my call, my group. Yeah. So it's possible to do it also in a 360, but then. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and you can have really good explanations of how you have a black box, for example, like using dreams as walking into a dream or something. It can be drugs, it can be computer game, it can be a lot of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, thank you. come to you and touching your shoulder ask what do you think about your lecture uh, yeah I think it was uh, yeah I love this I think it I was a bit speedy and I still think the feedback I get yesterday about my English I'm not sure I think it could be improving quite a lot uh, kind of hasty but uh, apart from that I get some notes here and some good questions in the end that was great Uh, because I will speak about the boring family dinner. <laughs>